I don't get it. Right now, mm -hmm. we've got, that I know of, six men. Six mm -hmm. men sexting and texting and writing and sending money and love letters to Susan Smith when she is a bald-faced liar that killed yes, her is. children in the worst way. Letting her car, her burgundy protege, go down a ramp with the two little boys alive, mm -hmm. strapped in the back seat. Why? I, I don't get it. <laughs> Why would oh, men want to be with this woman, send her money and sex text with her? But did you hear her lying? Do you remember mm -hmm. when that happened? The, the crying yep. and the snotting and the... <laughs> all that <laughs> happening. And I, I want to say whoever has my children, they please... Please bring them home to us where they belong, knowing full well they drowned, strapped mm. in their car seats. Mm. What well, shows how immature she is at the most basic well, okay, level? Wait, wait, wait. She thinks <laughs> the the most you yes. can say she's immature. She murdered well, we two little boys. Well, we all know she's boys. a sociopath. Hold on, we know she's a sociopath. But 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 what beyond the fact that she's a sociopath? What additional uh, factors are there that would lead to this. And one is an overattachment to men. She loves that feeling of falling in love, the, first, the feeling you How have. How are you linking months. this to double murder? Why okay. this woman did well, not get the death penalty, I do not know. And now there's six guys trying to have sex with her, really? Ew. But it's really it's really a pathological attachment. It's like being to men. in a barrel with with a rattlesnake. Who wants that? Well, I, well, apparently they do. And, you know, women who commit fanticide, who kill their children, often have some really, first of all, they, they, they're usually what we call. You better not say theme. really have some sexy mojo going on because <laughs> I'm totally cutting your mic. Oh, okay. So they're cluster B, which means they have three different disorders, sociopathy, bipolar, and borderline. Often they have a very pathological attachment to men. Either they kill the children to get back at a love object, like I'm going to kill our children because I'm mad at you. And, and I, it's hard to describe this without really sounding like it's trite, but it's these this, these are the underpinnings of what these women do. So it's either I'm going to kill the children to get back at you, or I'm going to kill the children because I found a new guy. And I don't want the children who, to be in the way. Interesting I want this, I, that you said that. Interesting. But I also want you to hear the level of detail that she weaves into her big fat lie about her two murdered little boys. I can't even imagine a more excruciating death than being strapped in a car, can't get out. The car goes underwater a, 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 a muddy lake. And you're in the car screaming for mommy as that car fills up with water till you drown. Uh, listen to our cut for Crime Online. On the night of October 25th, Susan Smith knocks on the door of a house near John D. Long Lake. She's hysterical when the man answers the door and tells him to call the police. A black man just carjacked her at a red light. He had a gun and she jumped out of the car. But her two boys, three-year-old Michael and 14-month-old Alex, are still in the car. Police begin searching immediately, and the nation's media converges on Union, South Carolina. For eight days, Susan Smith tells an ever-changing story of the carjacking, and friends get irritated when she keeps asking if Tom Finley has reached out to see her. Friends wonder why she would care about Finley when her two children are missing. On day nine of intense media pressure, Susan Smith meets with Union County Sheriff Howard Wells. And Wells meets with the press. Okay, um, note to self, who is Tom Finley? But there's more. There's more. Listen. Susan Smith has carried the lie as far as she can when she finally admits what she's done. There never was a black man with a gun that stole her car with her kids in the back. She now says she went out for a drive with her sons buckled into their car seats in the back. Feeling desperate, alone, and suicidal, she now says she drove to John D. Long Lake and planned to roll the car into the lake. Smith puts the car in neutral, but instead of going into the lake with the car and the boys, she jumps out and watches the car sink. Based on her directions, 
for where the car should be. Scuba divers locate the vehicle with the boys in the back still buckled into their seats. Just let that soak in for just one moment. Claiming, you know, why is it, Chris McDonough, that all these people that want to commit suicide end up killing their children or their family or somebody else, yet they miraculously live? Yeah, I mean, just a horrific thought in and of itself, right, Nancy? I mean, I, I actually drove the entire route that Susan Smith took that day. There were ample opportunities for her uh, to change her mind and turn around. I mean, there were stop signs, there were, you know, through residential neighborhoods. And to think that she was saying to the public, you know, or, or to the police when she initially confessed, well, you know, I thought about committing suicide, um, but I couldn't do it, et cetera, so I jumped out. You know, when you go to that boat ramp where these poor little babies are strapped in those back seats, and as that car is going down that ramp, I, I would submit to you, she had gotten out of that car almost immediately. And let that car go, to your point a couple of minutes ago. And as that water started to fill that vehicle, can you imagine the horror that these children were experiencing and the mother standing there as that vehicle started to sink? It took about six, I think between six to 15 seconds for that vehicle to hit the water and within a minute, it was submerged. Nancy, it just shows how cold-blooded she is. She could stand on the shore, look at the car submerged, and knowing that her babies were drowning. It really gives you insight into how detached and just cold-blooded she is. Yeah, who is this woman? Take a listen to our cut three from CrimeOnline.com. After high school, she began dating David Smith. Soon, there's a baby on the way, and the pair decide to get married. Ultimately, they have two boys, Michael Daniel and Alexander Tyler. But the children don't keep the marriage together. The Smiths separate several times. During one of these separations, Susan Smith begins dating Tom Findlay, the single son of a wealthy mill owner. Aha! Uh -huh. So, that is who Tom Finley is. Okay, Tara Malik, high-profile lawyer, joining us from her own law firm, Smith and Malik. Would that be motive? She wants yeah, to be think, with this um, rich guy. Yeah, I, I think you know the she's painted in different ways during the trial itself, um, and there was some conflicting testimony. One of the theories of the case um, that was put on and and suspected was that. She wanted to be with Thomas Finley. Finley didn't like the fact that, you know, she had two kids and in a way or in an attempt to uh, get back together with Finley, who she was having an affair with, you know, she drowned her two boys. Um, the other testimony that was presented during the trial was that, you know, she was someone who was an abused child. She had had a secret affair with her stepfather. She was frightened of her husband, you know, and so um, I think those details this jury ended up grappling with, and, and it's a case that should have been a death penalty case, but unfortunately not here. 